Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. Psalm 37, verse 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste to help me. My mouth 
mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day. For their numbers pass my knowledge. For their numbers of the Lord God are the God. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous name. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste to help. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, 
Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called you, answered me, my strength of soul you increase. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but he haughtily knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of enemies, and your hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading today is from 1 Corinthians. Since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying. For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking, be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, 
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to the other partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord." For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. God's grace, mercy, and peace be yours. Today in this sanctuary, we're gathered in, in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we heard in the psalm, with God's name and word, it's holy. Have you wondered what heaven is going to be like? I have. And rather than go through one of the top Sellers that comes out, someone claiming to have been there and come to describe it to you. 
we have what we need in today's text. The Bible tells us about heaven, gives us a picture of it. In fact, this sanctuary, the sanctus place, the place of holiness here, gather in his name, also gives you a picture of it. But first, Isaiah the priest before a prophet is given a vision of God and it sounds as if it's of heaven itself in the sixth chapter of the book that bears his name. So in our text, we first are given a clue that it's when Uzziah, king of Judah, died that this vision came. That, we understand that to be the year 740 B.C. This would have been the temple that Solomon built. So you have, you're to have that in mind when you picture this temple and this vision that is given to Isaiah. Here's the backdrop. And here God shows him what he is like. Imagine him coming into the temple, the sanctuary place, the holy place, when, when he sees the Lord of heaven and earth himself, king of hosts, high and lifted above, and angels flying around and praising the Lord, saying, holy, holy, holy. Yes, surprise, but even more than that, terror. Surprise that he wouldn't have expected this. They knew that in the two sacrifices of the day in the temple, in the morning and the evening sacrifice, God promised to meet his people. This was not a cold and harsh place, but a place that God prepared for them to meet God. In fact, Moses called it the tent of meeting, where you could go to God, where you'd get a little peace, at least, of heaven. But they expected this presence to be invisible, not visible with angels and with voices. Seraphim is the Hebrew plural for seraph, meaning fiery. And it's described here that God and these creatures that he created were flying around, each with six wings, two for each of the three different functions, including covering their faces in reverence before God, the king of hosts himself. So I, Isaiah's vision of heaven is not only one of surprise, but truly one of fear. God allowed Isaiah to see his glory. What's wrong with this? <laughs> this is a dangerous place to be, and Isaiah realized it. It's only in the true revelation of God, his holiness and who he is, that we understand ourselves. And Isaiah realized, and in fact, he confessed it. There's nothing that he can do to change this relationship of who he is as a sinner before a holy God. Something has to give, and God is not the one who's going to change. Isaiah knows that he, a sinner, cannot stand in the presence of the holy God. So he says, in effect, woe is me, or I'm lost, I'm undone, I'm a dead man. Isaiah confesses his complete sin. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people, verse 5, of unclean lips. I've sinned against the Lord in thought, word, Indeed, I also live among a people who are sinners and you, O oh Lord, would be right in consigning me and all of us to temporal, that is physical and eternal punishment. Don't we find ourselves sometimes 
or maybe often displaying presumptuous attitudes that we can march into God's presence and tell him what's what. Tell him that he's doing things wrong, that he should show me more favor, that he should give me a, a place of advantage over others, that Bill Gates and others sure, certainly shouldn't have more than I do. And if we don't say it out loud, which we may be wise enough to not, don't we still have these thoughts and desires that come from within? We also need a confession like Isaiah's. Woe is me because of my sin. We have five divine services in our Lutheran service book. And three, uh, that uh, the five of them have three different confessions. So we've been using, all, alternating different divine services and learning them. Keep things a little bit different each Sunday. Keep you engaged fully and learning and growing all the time. But I'd invite you to, and maybe we'll do this naturally as we use them, to memorize all three confessions of sin so that you can use them daily on your own. And when you hit the pillow at night, you can realize, Lord, I have sinned against you today in thought, word, and deed. And flee or run to the place of refuge, the uh, sanctuary, the sanctus, where we go to not only see God, where we not are, are not supposed to just approach on our own this king of all the universe of all time, but to come cleansed. We are to learn to fear God. And then after we've done so, then learn to love him because he's also your savior. He set up a temple in the Old Testament for them to meet with God. He has given us a way to meet him with his word and his sacraments to cleanse us as well. God's holiness and power together are a fire, a consuming, devastating, destructive force against sin. We sinners should be destroyed, but there's an exception. And this is where it goes from fear <laughs> to love. The exception is in his Savior. The holy seed would be referenced. It's a little beyond our reading today in Isaiah 6 in chapter, I'm sorry, in verse 13, where it references a holy seed or in Genesis called an offspring and then referred to as well in Galatians, here referenced in your sermon notes. These are a reference to God's Son, to Jesus Christ, to, to Yahweh who would come in the flesh in our place. And that turns the fear into love. He who loves the world, he who loved you to the point that he would come in flesh and take your sin upon himself. And so we have a picture in the temple of Isaiah and all of us who are sinners, and a seraph, one of these burning beings of God, comes with a coal from the heavenly altar of incense. And with this fiery coal, the angel touches Isaiah's lips. And rather than being burned up as a coal would normally do, instead, he's cleansed. It's because of the seed. It's because of the promised one. It's because of God's word and his action that Isaiah is cleansed instead of killed. It's the seed who would drink of the cup of God's wrath that should be poured out on me and you and Isaiah and others. And he drinks of eternal suffering. He drinks the entire lake of fire that was intended for the demons, for devils, not for you. He takes it all upon himself, this 
see this promised one. And he changes fear into love. And he brings us to trust him as well. God does all this as he brings you to sing with his angels, holy, sanctus. That's how we're sanctified. We're made clean. We're being cleansed day by day. We're being made new. And by the way, when you've been sanctified, then you become a saint. Sanctus, also Latin. Holy. You become holy by God. You see, he's the, he's the holy, holy, holy one. Doesn't that sound familiar? We'll sing it again as we come to the altar to receive his gifts today. These three holies for the three persons of God. But not only that, it's a what we would call a superlative. He's not only good, he's better. He's not only great, he's greater. And not only great or greater, but he's the greatest. A superlative means he's high above all, high and lifted up. Those of you who are doodling and like to draw, go ahead if you have another minute or two and draw the sanctuary, the temple, with God's throne high above and the train or the robes of his glory filling the entire sanctuary, the entire place of holiness. And so we will sing along with the angels in heaven, holy, 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 as we come to receive and be touched on our lips with his holy things, his very body and blood burned at the cross, burned for your sin, but come to cleanse you and give you life today. And then after this, Isaiah is sent out, as would be Peter when he fell on his face before the Holy One, before the sanctuary of God in the New Testament, the new sanctuary of God in flesh. Peter knew that he was a sinner and said, go away from me, Lord. But Jesus says, no, I've come to cleanse you. And now I'm going to send you, as he does us, back to our places of vocation, to school, to work, to serve one another at homes and our community and everywhere with, with his holy words, with his holy spirit, with his life now in us. You now also are sent along with Isaiah and the prophets of old, not to rewrite or write a new Bible, but to carry this to your loved ones, to your community, to the people you serve at work or even at school. It's the seed of God, the Holy One, who will come in our place. He happens to be from Nazareth. And for his sake, the Lord, for God, the Holy Lord's sake, he has atoned for our sin and for the sins of the world. Our, your sanctus, your position as a saint, your holiness comes from the one who's not only more holy, but the only one that can make all things holy. He does so. So with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we worship him who comes to burn you clean, to wash you clean, to make you his own through the forgiveness of sin with through the mouths of pastors and those that God has sent. He calls you holy again today with his absolution, cleansed and prepared for the Lord's service, touching your lips with his very body and blood, purging you of all of those things that are not of him. Here's now where fear comes to love and finally to trust all the way to glory. May he be the light burning in our hearts and lives and to the entire world through us as we go in his name, with his holiness and in his name and his gifts. Amen. We confess our faith with a Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.